Anyone else so would like to chant the verse? Sukantam idam tri vidham. Sukantam idam tri vidham. Shrinu me bharata sabha. Shrinu me bharata sabha. Abhyasa dramati yatra. Abhyasa dramati yatra. Dukantam cha nigachati. Dukantam cha nigachati. So now we'll do word by word translation. Uh, please repeat after me. Sukham. 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 Happiness. Happiness. Tu. 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 But. 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 Idanim. Idanim. Now. 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 Three with them. Three with them. Of three kinds. Of three of kinds. Three kinds. To know. To know. To know. Here. Here. Yeah. Me. 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 From me. From, From me. me. Bharatas Tabha. Bharatas Tabha. O best amongst the Bharatas. O best, o best among, among the Bharatas. Abhyasat. Abhyasat. By practice. By practice. By practice. Ramate. 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 One enjoys. One enjoys. One enjoy. Yatra. 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 Where? Yet, where? Where? Dukkha. 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 Of distress. Of, of distress. distress. Antam. 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 The end. The end. The end. Cha. 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 Also. 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 Nigajatiti. Nigajatiti. Gains. Gain. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki. Jai. O oh, best of the Bharatas, now please hear from me about the three kinds of happiness by which the conditioned soul enjoys and by which he sometimes comes to end of all distress. Purport. A conditioned soul tries to enjoy material happiness again and again. Thus he chews the chewed. But sometimes in the course of such enjoyment, he becomes relieved from material entanglement by association with the great soul. In other words, a conditioned soul is always engaged in some type of sense gratification. But when he understands by good association that it is only a repetition of the same thing and he is awakened to his real Krishna consciousness, he is sometimes relieved from such repetitive so-called happiness. So we'll we'll understand the meaning uh, by chanting prayers. Om Agyana Timirandasa Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvay Nama. So, you know, as we study chapter 18, we'll see that there are three types of everything, right? There is three types of determination. There is three types of happiness. Um, so in this verse, Krishna is talking about happiness and the different types of happiness. So, um, you know, I want to ask questions and this is going to be an interactive session. So please unmute yourself and feel free to answer. So there are two types of happiness. One is Shreyas and one is Priyas, right? So does anyone know what is Shreyas? So Shreyas is type of, or oh, Shreyas, right? I think we have a Shreyas at, at our temple. So Shreyas is actually and happiness, or it is um, something that is ultimately beneficial for you. So in the beginning, it will be tough for you. You might not like it, but at the end of it, you ultimately become uh, benefited, right? And uh, Prabhupada always gives the example of sugarcane. Like if you have jaundice and you're drinking sugarcane juice, it is very bitter to you. You don't want it, you know, but um, eventually, as you keep on drinking the sugarcane juice, eventually you get cured of the jaundice and you start enjoying it and you start realizing how sweet it is. So that is Shreyas. So in the beginning, it's not sweet. A lot of people take up to chanting and they say it's so boring and, you know, I fall asleep, you know, or uh, I just get it done for the heck of it. So but as they start doing it, they start enjoying it. So that kind of happiness is called Shreyas. It leads to ultimate satisfaction it leads to ultimate benefit and then there's this other kind of happiness which is called as priyas does anybody know what is priyas
So Priya is the ben is the is a happiness which gives you immediate benefit, right? So for example, you might be um, uh, basically uh, you know go you want to go and eat something outside. So you go as soon as you go, you you enjoy with your senses and you feel happiness. So that is called as Priya. However, you know you enjoy that. A lot of people you know enjoy a lot of food. They enjoy sex life. They enjoy whatnot. But at the end of it, it it just doesn't. it hurts you right like you go and eat so much you become overweight you get all of uh, health issues so all of prayers is something that will give you happiness in the beginning but at the end it will uh, cause you miseries or distress and shreyas is something that will be tough in the in the beginning it might not give you happiness but if you continue on the path it will give you happiness towards the end now you know there are also two words that we always talk about when it comes to happiness right one is sukham we always say uh, there's also that arthi right um, uh, the dhan sampatti gharave sukh labe something like that and then uh, uh, you know uh, let the distress of the body go away and then there is also in spirituality we talk about ananda the blissfulness so if you can someone can unmute and tell me what what do they understand by sukha and what do they understand by ananda do like what are the difference between the two anyone on the call who do we have uh suman prabhu has raised his hand suman prabhu you want to go and i'm so sorry because i'm sharing my screen i cannot see who's raised their hand so you can feel free to unmute and go ahead prabhu suman prabhu you want to um tell us the difference between sukha and ananda hari krishna yeah, yeah. actually i'm not confirm but i can try uh, like ananda is something that uh, you know it's go beyond it's not like limited is not uh, the word limited is not uh, over there ananda is unlimited like uh, ananda is especially used uh, for uh, uh, shri krishna like for the chit anand man uh, beyond everything that is uh, according to me that i think it's anand is something that and uh, the another word that, that you have told that you already described that yeah happiness that like uh, it will give it will give you the benefits after later on like that so this is the thing that i have recorded it yeah they are yeah, very very nice like explain so sukha means something that you know we get when we get in contact with any sense object right it has a beginning and at the end it has a beginning so we we get a nice i don't know what is your favorite dish for me i like uh dahi puri right so you get shay puri dahi puri it's so nice and you know it the happiness starts and it ends when you have your last bite so that is sukha right uh, or when you get anything in your life any kind of uh, gratification you have you know so it's it it starts and it ends but then chaitanya mahaprabhu talks about cheto darpanam arjanam you know dava bahav bahav neem nirvapanam anandam budhi vartanam right so anandam is that magnanimous ocean or bliss of happiness right and that's what um, chaitanya mahaprabhu is talking about so that is the difference between ananda and sukha and you know so we live in this material world and i i don't know if you guys have heard about um, law of diminishing you know the law of diminishing return so basically the more you know the the more you do it again and again right it either becomes less pleasurable or your ability to enjoy it reduces like i was saying you might be very prone to eating some chaat masala or something if you're uh, you know um, like i love chaat so you know i i i enjoyed it so much but now yeah i cannot eat so much of it and i know as i you know continue into as i age i'm not i won't be able to enjoy it so much right or you know if you have heard the term of uh, hedonic adaptation right like which means basically like you might buy a new house right and you will enjoy it so much you'll you like wow you know this is a new house and you're enjoying it but then after two or three years you would just feel nothing about it right like it you just get used you get so familiar with it that it, the happiness it was giving to you is gone because it's material right and that is exactly what happens with us and you know intelligent people they 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 know that they don't have to get you know um uh, always get prayers right they want to have shreyas which is ultimate happiness even if it's painful they want to to do the process and get to ultimate happiness and there's a very important uh thing that propa talks here right chewing the chewed and i was just looking up how many times propa has used this thing of chewing the chewed if you just look up like he speaks about it 
n number of times. He's talking about chewing the chew, chewing the chewed. And what, what does that really mean, right? What is chewing the chewed? So it's typically the cow, uh, right? She chews the food, it goes into her, her stomach. And then she pulls out that after some time and again chews it, right? Or like, you know, I think there's an example of someone, uh, he, he was told that sugar cane gives you uh, sugar, right? You, you enjoy the sugar cane juice. So he started biting every bamboo that was there and it was not giving him joy, right? So, so you, you basically, what you're trying to do is trying to chew the chew. We have been through so many species of life, right? Like, you know, every species of life, maybe it... Um, any animal life or, uh, you know, think even if in humans, you think somebody who lives in Canada, somebody who lives in India, somebody who lives somewhere in New Zealand or somebody who is uh, a, an American, an Indian or uh, a South African, any, any species, a, any country, any religion, any time, somebody who was born in our age or somebody who was born in previous age. I think everybody has the same rule, right? We, we, we are born, we, we study. Then, you know, we uh, we get married, we have children, we work for them, we, you know, we work hard, we give them everything they, they want, we get old, and then, uh, you know, we die. And then again, in the next life, the same thing starts, you're going to be born, you're going to study, you're going to, um, you know, get married, you're going to get a job, or you're going to have some kind of living, uh, you know, and then you're going to have children, you're going to have, um, they're going to get married, you're going to get old, you're going to die. Again, you're going to be born. Again, the cycle is going to start. And I think if I if I repeat myself, you all are going to start snoozing away. It's like, what is this method you're talking about, right? She's repeating herself. It's a broken record. But if you actually look what we have been doing life after life, we have been doing the same thing, right? Like we we have been born, we go through the going pains, we, we get some education, we get some kind of living, we get married, we have children, we raise them. We go through the emotions of life. We, you know, we marry, we marry off our children. We get old, we die. And we again born. And we again want to do that. And, and not like I was saying, you know, we, maybe we are right now Indians. We were in a different uh, country before this. We had different lives. Maybe we were born 100 years before. Maybe we were born, um, you know, in different species of life. Like they say, we have 36,000 species of life. But the record just goes on and on and on. They say, right, like a broken record. Can you just stop telling me the same thing again and again? Um, and, and because you're like a broken record. And, and that's what we are. We've been doing it over and over again. And because we don't get enough of it, right? We want, to, it's like that sugar cane thing. We want to go in and, and, and squeeze out more um, juice out of it again and again and again. And, and we don't realize that, you know, we are this, uh, you know, we're doing this chewing the chew. We have got married before. We've got married so many times before. We have had children so many times before in so many different lives. We have raised them and, you know, we have gone and made a career or we have we've had a living so many times. But we do that over and over and over and over again, right, in every life. So uh, there is no end to it. And actually, the word chewing the chew, right, it comes, uh, it, it, this is actually mentioned when Prahlad Maharaj was um, uh, preaching to his schoolmates, right? He he goes to school, Prahlad Maharaj is a five-year-old boy and um, he, he's going to school and he's preaching to his um, friends at school. And his father, who is um, basically a demon, uh, the, he, he wants to know from his son that, what have you learned from school? And uh, when Prahlad is talking to his father, he, he, he tells him that, you know, we, this is what we're doing life after life, my father. We were chewing the chew. And, and we know, we all know how Hiranyakashipu gets extremely mad at him. And he says, um, you know, what are you learning? And then he, he you know, he, he calls upon his teachers and, and we know the whole story. So that is where actually this uh, is first time mentioned, chewing the chew. We're doing the same thing over and over and over again in every life, in every life, right? Um, we, we are moving in this material world over and over again. Uh, you know, and like I was mentioning, like a, like a broken record, we're doing the same thing over and over again. But I think Prabhupada mentions a very important point here that by association of a devotee, we, we start following spiritual life, right? And, you know, there is a difference between a grihastha and a griham medi. So if you can unmute yourself and someone can tell me what's the difference between a grihastha and a griham medi.
Do we have anybody raising their hands? Or I can call upon someone. Can someone tell me what who's a grahastha and who's a grahamedi? I know Hare Krishna Mother. Grahastha, we know all the family. That word I know, but another word I need to know from you. So okay, let's see if anyone else wants to give a try. Suman Prabhu has raised his uh, Suman Mataji has raised her hand. Go on, Mataji. Uh, Griha Medi means uh, those who are following uh, the principles, four principles, uh, as well as uh, uh, like uh, uh, Atiti, Samman, and uh, those things. No, uh, I think that is called Griha Medi. Okay. And is there anyone else who wants to, to tell what's a Griha Medi and who's a Grihastha? Gruho Medi. Sorry, go ahead. What, what is the sentence, Mataji? Gruho Medi or Medi? Medi. So, so Prabhu, there are two things, right? Grahastha is Gasta Ashram. It's an ashram. Yeah. So, it is where, you know, you're keeping Krishna as a center of your Krishna, Radha Krishna is the center of your life, right? So husband and wife are doing exactly what a materialistic couple would do, right? They are married, they are having children, they are going, having, working outside, they're earning money, but they are putting Krishna as the center, right? So that is Grahastha Ashram, where they, whatever they're doing, they earn money to cook food, that food is getting offered to Krishna, right? Um, you are probably raising your children, but you're trying to raise them in Krishna consciousness. And again, I, you know, ch that children thing is a whole different topic because they are not your branches. They are their own trees. And, you know, some kids can come to Krishna consciousness, some cannot. But as a parent, you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? You're giving them, uh, make, making conditions favorable for them to, to accept Krishna consciousness. You are, uh, you know, you're uh, chanting, you're following the four regulative principles, you are reciting Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. So you're following a devotional life that is called a grahastha, right? And a grahamedi medhi is anyone who is not following uh, Krishna consciousness, right? They are just looking for temporary benefit. They are enjoying their senses, uh, you know, they are not looking at the Shreya's part. They are just looking at the Priya part right they just want immediate satisfaction immediate enjoyment and then you know they don't even know what's going to happen after life they don't want to talk about death they don't want to know what happens after this life that's a grihamedi right but Prabhupada has taught us to be grihastas right and I actually you know I also wanted to ask devotees over here like maybe if you are following Krishna consciousness for a year two years whatever you're following or 20 years. Maybe if, if you can unmute and tell me one thing in your life that has changed positively since you started following Krishna consciousness, because I always feel that, you know, there is nothing to lose in this path, right? And it's always auspicious, um, you know, like, even if, um, uh, you know, Arjuna did this, he, he, he was successful at the end, it was so tough for him, but he followed Krishna's instructions, and he was successful. So I feel any person who follows Krishna consciousness is always successful at the end, right? Good things happen to them. So I just wanted to ask uh, anyone on the call or a few volunteers, if you can tell me, you know, any positive thing that has happened in your life ever since you have started Krishna consciousness. Can someone unmute and tell me? Anyone can raise their hand? My anger controlled a lot. Previously, I'm very much angry, anger, and good relations with the family. Yeah, previously it is there. Now it is more, and uh, hatred uh, decreased, anger decreased. So very nice. Yeah, very nice, Ram Krishna Prabhu. So anger and hatred and uh, yeah. that is gone. And very also, nice. if you. Uh, like to share something with the friends with a lot of uh, years of, and years of relation if they behave in a different way that you did not think take that moment also so that level of uh, maturity i grown up so even though you are a close friend for 40 years one day he did an unbelievable thing in your case uh, i'm ready to accept yes no issues i will take that situation so uh, up to that that is the uh, thing and 
and and you said it is always gain no loss at all in the krishna consciousness we are in better shape for sure yeah 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 maybe other people can also very nice very nice prabhuji so your consciousness grew up and you're not affected by people as much even if they are um, you know not actually uh behaving properly or whatever because you know the thing is we're getting this love from krishna so we you know yeah. that dependency of that love that we were looking from people who are yeah. not perfect who are you know is not there right we mm -hmm. we have this big ocean of love that is flowing to us from krishna so we are so satisfied and uh, so content right yeah, and also uh, I, i'm always not correct maybe krishna need to correct me also sometimes uh, we think uh, we are correct and perfect so <laughs> uh yeah that also krishna will correct us wherever we do mistakes in a in a relationship of wife and husband uh, in uh, some egos will come definitely so yeah definitely i request krishna correct me as a husband correct my wife uh, if she is doing some mistakes or uh, rectify my children give a good uh, vision and knowledge to them so so we don't know who is correct and who is wrong everything i leave to krishna and perform whatever i wish to do so that is the bottom statement i take every time yeah very nice so humility has come right like humility yes, acceptance so so many good qualities thank you so much for sharing ram krishna guru anyone else would like to share like any positive things that have happened in your life ever since you took up krishna consciousness suman mataji again yeah go on mataji Yeah, Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, actually, uh, I'm not a devotee. Still, I'm like uh, working on this thing. Like uh, since September, I guess uh, I have started listening uh, to Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam classes, uh, basically from uh, Rachi branches branch. And uh, now it's been only six months. And uh, uh, like what I have realized, uh, previously I was doing like one or two mala japa. now i began to start in i already started 15 mala and uh, some day yeah some day it missed i don't know why but uh, because of uh, my ignorance it may be so um, but i still i i just uh, one thing that i have followed since 6 months that uh, i never be alone like uh, still i'm sitting alone in my home but i'm not alone as because at that moment moment also uh mala is not with me but still i try to keep on chant chanting hari krishna so it it gives me lot of happiness in from within i cannot express in my words i know it's very less to express but yes that i have understood that somebody is always there with me the mantra is always with me sometimes i feel like some person like prabhupad may be or something like the feeling is always there with me like i'm never alone Uh, in the street also when i go uh, to drop my kids to the school there also i feel someone is there with me the mantra is go on so uh, how to explain i don't know but i feel something is there very nice very nice thank you for sharing suman mataji so you know you're chanting and it's purifying you and and you're feeling the presence of krishna yes. um, and the mantra so very nice thank you so much for sharing Does anyone else want to share their experience of any good thing that their experiences experiencing ever coming into Krishna consciousness? Okay, so that's fair enough. So thank you so much for sharing this. And now we'll go to the last part of what this uh, whole verse is, right? And and Prabhupada talks about association. and you know uh, so it says sadhu sanga sadhu sanga sadhu sanga hoy lava matra sadhu sanga sarva shastra kahe lava matra sadhu sadhu sanga sarva siddhi hoy so what that means is um you know sadhu sanga sadhu sanga sadhu sanga the all of the verses are saying all of the um uh, scriptures are saying that even a fraction like i think it's 1/10 of a second of association like you know lava matra is either 1/10 or 1/25th i don't know so it's so very less even a fraction of a second if you get that association of a devotee you are getting the maximum benefit right and you know actually if we look around like you know when we think sadhu we think oh this maharaj that maharaj and you know i need their association and it's very there right like we have very few uh, senior devotees who are traveling around the world and you might not get their physical association but you can you can listen to them 
right? Like, you know, Shruti, that's the first thing that we do, like, you know, Shravanam. So you can listen to them. But, but not only them, right? Like there are so many senior devotees within the temple. And, you know, as devotees, we really need to confide in these devotees. We need to get their association. You know, what is getting association means we, we take their association, right? Like, for example, I think there's an example where Prabhupada was, um, I think it was in Gujarat. He was um, uh, trying to raise a lot, a lot of funds. So uh, what he promised all of the donors is like, we will come to you and uh, we will uh, have to show them at your home. So he used to take these white bodies devotees and he used to go to all of these houses in Gujarat, right? And have prashadam. And uh, these devotees, you know how Indian culture is. If they are, if you say no, that also means yes, right? So they would just serve prashadam to them, serve prashadam to them. And um, so like literally, unless you're going to pull out your plate, devotees are going to come and serve you. So even if these white devotees are saying, oh, no, no, I'm done, I'm good, they would still serve them. And they would end up eating 16 puris and 25 puris. And Prabhupada used to say, I counted, you You ate 25 puris and you ate 16 puris. So, you know, so we are not giving our association, right? We are taking their association. So a lot of cases, you know, what happens is we, we need to go and seek this association. And, and it might happen that, how do I get association? How do I seek association? So in our Shastras, it's mentioned that there are six ways that you can seek this association, right? One is you can give gift to a devotee. You can take gift from a devotee. You can invite them for prashadam. You can uh, go to their house for prashadam. You can, you know, open your heart to them and you can listen from them. And actually, when we do this, you know, this, this should be done in such a mood of, um, you know, confiding in a devotee, because a lot of times, you know, have, you've heard probably the term of skeleton in the closets, right? Like we all have that. We all have done something. Every devotee or every person in the world has something, something, you know, it's like you, you can look up the term, what it means, like, you know, skeleton in the, in the, in the closet. But you should have such good relationship with the Vaishnavas and devotees that you should be able to confide in them and open up to them. Maybe pick one or two. You don't have to go and tell the whole world your whole life story, but you need to have those few souls, few devotees that you go and seek their association, right? You get their, uh, maybe they're your mentor, maybe they're your guide, maybe they're your best friend in Krishna consciousness, and maybe there are, you can count them, but you should have them. And, and I feel over my whatever 24, 25 years of Krishna consciousness, that has really kept me going because there will be dark times in your life. There will be tough times. And I think those relationships, those devotees are who will take you through that, that time, right? And I and I, I remember this story I heard from Nitai Sevini Mataji. And uh, she had said, you know, and when I heard the story first, I was like, I don't even know if it makes sense to me. So the, the story goes like, you know, there's this one hunter and it's in recent times. So he goes and uh, he's fighting in a forest he's hunting in a forest and he catches hold of a fox right he, he holds the catches hold of a fox and the of the um forest officer comes so when, once the forest officer comes what happens is he he hides a fox now this man is a very strong big man and a foxes are small so he takes the fox and he hides him inside his coat and uh, the forest officer comes and he's saying, what are you doing here? And he says, no, I'm just taking a stroll. I'm hiking. Nothing is going on. But that fox inside has started to bite him, right? The fox is biting him and biting him. And he's literally kind of taking away his, like, he's chewed into his skin and, and everything. But he's feeling the pain, but he's not able to tell it to that uh, forest officer, right? And um, and this happens. And, and the forest officer is talking to him for a long time. But after some time, the forest officer leaves. And but in the meantime, the fox inside has actually bitten him so much and eaten up him so much that the hunter dies. Right. When I heard the story, it didn't make sense to me. But actually, you know, few few I want to say years down the line, when I when I was contemplating on this story, it, it basically means that if there is something in your heart, right, and the something in the heart which is which is not right and which you want to confide in a devotee, you want to open up your heart and you want to say, this is, this is how I feel. This is how, is this right? Tell them, because if you don't open up your heart and you're going to not tell your mentor, you're not going to tell your close devotee friend, maybe it's one or two, right? Like we don't want to tell everything to everybody, but if you're not going to do that, you're not going to uh, open up in front of devotee, then that fox within you will eat you up, right? And your devotional service will be lost. Your devotional life will be gone. So it's very important, very important to have that 
uh, two-way door, you say, or that open communication with few set of devotees. And then, I, as I mentioned, you know, having exchanging gifts, inviting them for prashadam, going to them for prashadam, and, and developing that relationship with devotees, right? A lot of times I see devotees come year over your, your temple, but they don't know what their karmi name is, what their spiritual name is, what is what. They're not sharing anything of their life, right? They're saying, okay, Hare Krishna, come on, let's ma prashade go in there. Let's have prashadam. And then, okay, Hare Bol, we're going home. And the next Sunday they meet. And so there is no exchange of, um, I want to say, exchange of heart, exchange of your feelings. You know, how are you feeling? What is going on in your life? That is not done year over year. And I think we need to get to a point where we are able to share our heart, able to share what challenges we are facing with, with our close friends, our mentor, and be able to uh, you know, develop those strong relationships in, in Krishna consciousness. I think that's very important. Um, and I think also very important here is uh, taking things for granted right when it comes to association um like for example i'll tell you my example like uh, you know sameshwar prabhu had told me i think a month ago or 15 days ago can you give a class and so much was going on in my life and it's still today like you know my husband is traveling he's in india i have three kids i have a very busy job i have a packed schedule uh you know i have an offsite to attend tomorrow we're prepping for that there's so much going on and when Sameshwar Prabhu reached out to me this sunday i was like if i don't put my foot down and make my, pre my you know give association with devotees, association with Shastra importance and a priority, this will never happen, right? So really not taking things for granted and putting that as a priority is so important because we don't know that we might sleep today, we might not wake up tomorrow. It might not happen, right? Like we don't know how much time we have. We are not as blessed as Parikshit Maharaj that we know we have seven days. None of us know. We don't know how much time we have. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So let's try to take this association very, very seriously, make this a priority. Let's not take this for granted. And, and like Prabhupada says, like, you know, when we come in association of a devotee, a good, pure soul, then our life will be changed. You know, we are not going to hunt after prayers. We are going to go after shreyas. We are going to not look after sukha. We're going to look after ananda. So that's what our life will be changed into. Um, so I'm hoping by this verse, at least we can take these few things as a takeaway. The first thing that I mentioned was about, you know, the long lasting happiness, which is, uh, you know, not very pleasurable and in the beginning, but at the end, it gives you ultimate benefit. So really going after that Shreyas, going after that um, Ananda, uh, you know, understanding, chewing the chew, like how we are basically chewing the same thing over and over again in every life uh, and how we need to get out of this. Um, you know, um, cycle continuously of enjoyment with uh, with our senses and, and ultimately seeking the benefit of association. Prabhupada has given this house to us, has given us such beautiful sh uh, shastra, such, you know, wonderful devotees who have changed our lives. So really seeking that association and, you know, ultimately becoming um, successful and ultimately uh, getting the ultimate benefit by Shreyas. So that is all I wanted to say in this verse. I know we have about 10 minutes left. I have to end at eight o'clock because I have to take care of my three-year-old child. Uh, but uh, if there aren't any open questions, comments, uh, corrections, uh, we can open the line, Prabhu. I think everyone can unmute so anytime. So do we have any questions or comments or corrections? I don't know if I put everyone to sleep. Nobody's ready to come in. Can you all hear me? Hare Krishna Gokul Priya Mataji. Thank you so much for wonderful class as usual. Very nicely explained like how we can change our life uh, like after coming to Krishna consciousness, yeah, really, it uh, really helps. Earlier, before uh, ISKCON, we used to have party and going to movies and all these things, right? But now, after coming to ISKCON, we have such a great association and congregation. Every Saturday, Sunday, we have something program at uh, somebody's place or at our temple. So our mind is totally engrossed in this like Krishna consciousness continuously since morning to night. So 
that is really good thing with us so we are very fortunate having such a wonderful association and um, yeah like uh, even you, even we are in grihastha um, they say in grihastha ashram you can get more bhakti like sant tukaram maharaj he was like in grihastha right but continuously thinking about vithal and finally he got to uh, get to the pushpak viman so like that in grihastha ashram we can do lot of things um, while um, in the family life but still we are doing seva or having good association doing uh, kirtan programs and all that so we are really blessed we are having such a nice thing in our life thank you so much thank you satyabama mata ji for sharing so really so you know as in a grihastha life right behind between any couple is the divine couple so we be keeping krishna in the center of our lives and i think once you advance in krishna consciousness once you have uh you know um after a few years you you'll actually notice that when you go back and you you're going to go to a movie or you're going to go to a party you're not going to enjoy as much as you used to before yeah. because you've got the higher taste right like you have yeah. got like just like i i see my child at 3 years old she doesn't play with the toys that she used to play when she was 1 year old right mm. or or same thing with us like when we get used to eating good food like you know prashad and food is very hard to enjoy just any ordinary food yeah. or any ordinary <laughs> association we are like okay like it's going to be hard for us to go back so i think the only direction we have is to go forward in krishna consciousness so thank you for sharing your realization satyabhama mata ji Haribo, Haribo. Anyone also, else? Also, they. Uh, I heard one story. If there are, there were so many stalls. So in exhibition, and one stall was like our uh, Krishna stall, right? Having tilak and mala and dhoti, kurta, and uh, everyone was chanting. Another stall was like having all these material things and alcohol. So people th- thought, okay. let's go and enjoy so little like it's very temporary and when they went inside then hell but when they uh, some people they went to this krishna conscious um, stall and uh, initially they were feeling bored what is this how they look and all that and what they are saying just chanting hare krishna maha mantra but when they enter inside they get so much bliss so it's like that outside it looks like uh, it's very hard oh yeah, early morning we have to get up and do all these thing offering and uh, do kirtan and 16 rounds and all that but that that will lead us to um, something good like bliss ananda which we are mentioning right but uh, in this way eh, alcohol and meat eating and enjoyment and parties uh, we think oh it's like oh so much uh, happiness but it, it tends to very bad thing like hell so th- that is the difference yeah and even if you don't think about hell right like people will say oh i don't see hell but even if it's not hell i want to say even in this life like what yeah. is happening to misery. people who are e- miseries right they're falling yeah. sick their liver is getting spoiled they are mm-hmm. getting aging so early they there are so many problems that they're facing you know with with all of that and and actually with krishna consciousness we want we don't want to preach that this is bad we want to just preach with krishna consciousness is so yes. good right like just take the good and the bad will immediately go away from your life oh. right like if you have um a glass and you have um you know um there is so maybe dirt in it the more water you're going to pour the more krishna consciousness you're going to pour the water is going to get cleaned out right sure. in, uh, by itself you don't need to go and pull out the dirt too as you start pulling putting on pure mm. and pure water the the dirt is going to come out it and that's what happens yeah itself. exactly yeah. so um so that's what krishna consciousness is putting Maybe. in good and good yeah any anyone else would like to share any any realization or any corrections comments Okay, so I think whatever I said, everyone knows. So maybe I can ask everyone to repeat, like at least few critical points that we discussed on this call. Yeah, it's a definitely great association, Mataji. So as we know, we are all paid IT consultants. So if I work one hour, I will get a two hundred dollars per hour, or one fifty dollars, seventy dollars per hour. So uh, in a project in office, we 
spend time uh, day and nights and uh, meet the objective of the project for a successful deliverables. In the same way, the Krishna given a hundred years of life for everyone. So this is a bigger project than the project we're handling in at our office. So definitely uh, need to appreciate uh, uh, every uh, Krishna devotee uh, without expecting a single dollar uh, spending uh, their valuable time sharing the Krishna word to each and every corner of the world. Uh, it's a even though in office uh, you will say uh, if you want to work one hour more means uh, will you pay for me or not? Uh, we will not talk until they pay us. So, but here uh, wholeheartedly coming and sharing uh, the screenshots and preparing the materials. So it's not at all easy task uh, it's all krishna grace uh, uh, yeah good learning also as i said it is 100 years of projects for everyone uh, to learn a lot of new things to share uh, so it's a krishna krishna call definitely in our office calls we cannot call we cannot take call of other person of our team member as it is a krishna's call we can express our our feelings happiness uh, sorrows everything so yeah yeah the two points, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, Prabhuji. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more hands. So really summarizing the three points we discussed about happiness. You know, we want to go into the long-lasting happiness, which is, which might not feel very pleasurable in the beginning, but it'll feel it. It'll give us ultimate happiness towards the end. We don't want to do the chew. You know, we don't want to chew that's already chewed, and we want to take association of devotees to be able to get there. Um, so these are the three points I would like to summarize and we can end the call. Is someone talking? Hare Krishna Prabhu, I think the name is Hare Krishna. Do you want to say something? Yeah, Mother, I have this, uh, right, Hare Krishna, I just had this video, I was trying to, the example you were taking about the water. So I was thinking there's a way I could share this video. It's a wonderful video, but um, I just don't know how to share it. Just one second, maybe I can. Uh, yeah, I think you're not a host, Prabhu. That way we'll, it won't be able to yeah. share. But maybe you can share with Simeshwar Prabhu and he can send out to the group later if that works for you. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. So thank you so much, everyone. We are at the hour. If there are no more questions, we'll end the call. Thank you so much for your wonderful association and uh, uh, you know uh, opportunity to share some of my realizations. So Hare Krishna, everyone. Vanch the Kalpa Tarivestra, Kripas and Dubavicha, Padidana, Vaishnava,